Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is series complex impedances. Our objective is to learn to calculate the total impedance of an inline or series arrangement of complex impedances. This lecture operates under the presumption the viewer is more than passing familiarity with complex number math and the calculation of resistive, capacitive, and inductive complex impedances as illustrated in the preceding lectures available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet, or only dim and recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. During the course of the Basic Electronics 1 DC Circuit Analysis Playlist, also available at the Big Bad Tech channel, recall we had numerous occasions to acquaint ourselves with a DC analysis of series arrangements of resistors. This lecture is merely an extension of this much earlier discussion into the realm of AC circuit analysis incorporating reactive elements like capacitors and inductors. As such, I'm going to skip a lot of the superfluous discussion and get straight to the point. Let us begin. Complex impedances in series or inline arrangements add up. You don't need a formula to remember this fact, although you do need to take into account two additional rules when dealing with complex impedances. One, you need to calculate the complex impedance of elements comprising the series relationship at that specific frequency, and two, one must take into account the angles of those complex impedances comprising the series relationship during the addition process. Long story short, direction matters, and if you forget this fact, you will fail. Allow me to demonstrate. Consider the series or inline relationship of a 200 ohm resistor and a 530.5 millihenry inductor subject to the sinusoidal AC voltage with a frequency of 60 Hz. We need to convert these individual components to complex impedances and then add them up. The 200 ohm resistor is a complex impedance of 200 ohms at an angle of zero using polar format. You don't need a formula to calculate resistive complex impedance. All you do is take the resistance value and stick at an angle of zero degrees behind it and call it good. Illustrated on an impedance diagram, the resistor has a magnitude of 200 ohms and is pointed entirely in the real horizontal positive x direction. The inductor necessitates a slightly more involved calculation. The complex impedance of an inductor is 2 pi FL at an angle of positive 90 degrees. Substituting in our given values into the equation, we arrive at an inductive impedance of 200 ohms at an angle of positive 90 degrees. Illustrated on the impedance diagram, the inductor has a magnitude of 200 ohms and is pointed entirely in the imaginary vertical positive y direction. Before we add these series impedances, let's take a look at them individually. Both elements have a magnitude of 200 ohms. Does this mean the 200 ohm resistor is functionally equivalent to the 530.5 millihenry inductor at 60 Hz? Absolutely not. They are entirely different entities and the impedance diagram clearly illustrates that they are pointed in two totally different directions. Again, you must always take into account direction, and the moment you forget to take into account direction is the moment you fail. When we add ZR plus ZL, we arrive at a value of 282.8 ohms at an angle of 45 degrees. When illustrated on the impedance diagram, ZT, the total impedance of the series relationship of two elements, appears to be kind of a 50-50 mix of the resistive and inductive nature of these two elements. Note the angle of the total complex impedance is 45 degrees, midway between resistor land at 0 degrees and inductor town at positive 90 degrees. This is to be expected given the equal magnitudes of both the resistive and inductive elements comprising this relationship. This balanced condition, however, is only true at 60 Hz. Consider if we dropped excitation frequency in half to only 30 Hz. The resistor is essentially immune to frequency effects and as such remains a complex impedance of 200 ohms at an angle of zero. The inductor being a reactive element, however, must take into account this reduction in frequency. Substituting our given values into the equation, we arrive at an inductive impedance of 100 ohms at an angle of 90 degrees. Illustrated on the impedance diagram, the inductor is still pointed entirely in the vertical imaginary positive y direction, only its magnitude has been cut in half. When we add ZR plus ZL, we arrive at a value of 223.6 ohms at an angle of 26.6 degrees. When illustrated on the impedance diagram, ZT, the total impedance of the series relationship at 30 Hz, appears to be hugging the real horizontal positive x-axis 
indicating this series relationship does have some slightly inductive characteristics. However, it's primarily resistive in nature. This makes sense given our inductive complex impedance dropped and our resistive impedance remain the same. This condition, however, is only true at 30 Hz. Consider if we raised the excitation frequency to 120 Hz, twice our initial value. As previously, the resistor is essentially immune to frequency effects, and as such remains a complex impedance of 200 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees. The inductor, being a reactive element, however must take into account this increase in frequency. Substituting our given values into the equation, we arrive at an inductive impedance of 400 ohms at an angle of positive 90 degrees. Illustrated on the impedance diagram, the inductor is still pointed entirely in the imaginary vertical positive y direction, only its magnitude is twice our initial calculation. When we add ZR plus ZL, we arrive at a value of 447.2 ohms at an angle of 63.4 degrees. When illustrated on the impedance diagram, ZT, the total impedance of the series relationship of 120 Hz, appears to be hugging the imaginary vertical positive Y axis, indicating this series relationship does have some slightly resistive characteristics, however it's primarily inductive in nature. This makes sense given our inductive complex impedance increased and our resistive impedance remain the same. These scenarios are meant to illustrate an important fact when dealing with series or inline relationships of complex impedances. The resultant total impedance of a series relationship will always be a mixture of those elements comprising it, favoring the larger element's contribution. Recall that when the resistor and inductor had equal magnitudes, the total impedance of the series relationship appeared to be an equal mix of the two. If, however, the resistor was larger, the total impedance of the series relationship appeared to be favoring the resistive end of the spectrum. Finally, when the inductor was larger, the total impedance of the series relationship appeared to be favoring the inductive end of the spectrum. In summary, the element with the largest complex impedance magnitude determines the resulting nature of the total series complex impedance. This being said, capacitors and inductors are essentially mirror images of one another and as such can cancel each other's influence out. Allow me to demonstrate. Consider another series or inline relationship of a 160 ohm resistor, 180 millihenry inductor, and a 27 microfarad capacitor at a frequency of 50 Hz. We're being asked to solve for the total complex impedance of this series circuit. 160 ohm resistor is a complex impedance of 160 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees using polar format. Illustrated on the impedance diagram, the resistor has a magnitude of 160 ohms and it's pointed entirely in the real horizontal positive x direction. The inductor and capacitor necessitate slightly more involved calculations. The complex impedance of the inductor is 2 pi FL at an angle of positive 90 degrees. Substituting our given values into the equation, we arrive at an inductive impedance of roughly 56.5 ohms at an angle of positive 90 degrees. Illustrated on the impedance diagram, the inductor has a magnitude of 56.5 ohms and is pointed entirely in the imaginary vertical positive y direction. The complex impedance of the capacitor is 1 over 2 pi FL at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Substituting our given values into the equation, we arrive at a capacitive complex impedance of roughly 117.9 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Illustrated on the impedance diagram, the capacitor has a magnitude of 117.9 ohms and is pointed entirely in the imaginary vertical negative y direction. When we add ZR plus ZL plus ZC, we arrive at a value of roughly 171.4 ohms at an angle of negative 21 degrees. When illustrated on the impedance diagram, ZT, the total impedance of the series relationship, appears to be primarily resistive, however it has slightly capacitive characteristics and that it's dipping into the fourth quadrant. One would expect this series combination of three elements to exhibit primarily resistive characteristics. However, include a hint of capacitive features. Again, this condition is only true at our given excitation frequency of 50 Hz. Consider what would happen if we raise the excitation frequency to 400 Hz. Which reactive element's nature would now dominate the circuit at this dramatically increased frequency? You should be able to predict this effect with a simple mental exercise. Given resistors are essentially immune to the effects of frequency, we could expect its contribution to remain unchanged. 
The magnitude of the inductive complex impedance, however, is directly proportional to excitation frequency, and we should expect its contribution to increase. The magnitude of the capacitive complex impedance, in contrast, is inversely proportional to excitation frequency, and we should expect its contribution to decrease. In summary, we should expect the inductor to steal the show at 400 Hz. Let's prove this hypothesis with some calculations. At 400 Hz, the 160 ohm resistor still presents a complex impedance of 160 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees. Substituting our given values into the inductive and capacitive complex impedance formulas, we arrive at the following results. The inductor has a complex impedance of roughly 452.4 ohms at an angle of positive 90 degrees. As we expected, its magnitude increased. The capacitor has a complex impedance of roughly 14.7 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. As we expected, its magnitude decreased. When we add ZR plus ZL plus ZC, we arrive at a value of roughly 466.0 ohms at an angle of 69.9 degrees. When illustrated on the impedance diagram, ZT, the total impedance of the series relationship, does indeed shift dramatically to the inductive end of the pool deep inside the first quadrant. One would expect the series combination of three elements to exhibit largely inductive characteristics at this dramatically increased frequency. One more illustrated example problem before I cut you loose on some exercises. As a practical example of series impedance calculations, compare and contrast an ideal inductor with a real one. An ideal inductor is entirely inductive in nature and has no internal resistance. A real inductor, in contrast, is only primarily inductive in nature and always possesses a tiny internal resistance that oftentimes needs to be accounted for. Consider a 47 millihenry inductor with a tiny internal resistance, Ri, of let's say 14 ohms. We're being asked to solve for the total complex impedance of this inductor at a frequency of 1.2 kilohertz, or 1,200 hertz. One can visualize a non-ideal inductor as the inductive portion and the internal resistive portion in series with one another. Substituting our given values into the inductive complex impedance formula, we find the inductive portion of this inductor to be approximately 354.4 ohms at an angle of positive 90 degrees. Summating the internal resistance and inductive contributions, we find that this non-ideal inductor to present a complex impedance of 354.6 ohms at an angle of 87.7 degrees. Given 87.7 degrees is super close to 90 degrees, this non-ideal inductor is still primarily inductive, however the impedance domain shows it's slightly out of whack and not perfectly vertical anymore. Importantly, one must remember that the resistive and inductive portions of this non-ideal inductor are entirely inseparable, meaning that the whole inductor represents a complex impedance of 354.6 ohms at an angle of 87.7 degrees. As an application of this principle, consider the same non-ideal inductor employed in the series relationship with a 270 ohm resistor and a 1.2 microfarad capacitor, again at an excitation frequency of 1.2 kHz. The 270 ohm resistor is a complex impedance of 270 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees using polar format. Illustrated on the impedance diagram, the resistor has a magnitude of 270 ohms and is pointed entirely in a real horizontal positive x direction. As previously demonstrated, the complex impedance of the non-ideal inductor is roughly 354.6 ohms at an angle of 87.7 degrees. Illustrated on the impedance diagram, the inductor has a magnitude of 354.6 ohms and is slightly skewed from the imaginary vertical positive y direction. Substituting our given values into the equation, we arrive at a capacitive impedance of roughly 110.5 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Illustrated on the impedance diagram, the capacitor has a magnitude of 110.5 ohms and is pointed entirely in the imaginary vertical negative y direction. When we add ZR plus our non-ideal inductor plus ZC, we arrive at a value of roughly 374.3 ohms at an angle of 40.6 degrees. When illustrated on the impedance diagram, ZT, the total impedance of this series relationship, appears to be a mix of resistive and inductive natures, and that's roughly midway in the first quadrant. One would expect this series combination of three elements to exhibit a mixture of resistive and inductive characteristics, with the understanding that a very small portion of the resistive nature is an inherent characteristic of the non-ideal inductor.
All right, that's about enough preliminary discussion about series complex impedances. Let's put your understanding of series complex impedance calculations to the test with this example set. Given these series circuits, calculate the resultant complex impedance. Remember, direction matters, and one must calculate complex impedance for reactive elements like capacitors and inductors at the frequency of interest. Really, the only way to get this wrong is to fail to take into account direction or forget to perform complex impedance calculations. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. Unless explicitly stated otherwise, like in problem 4, you can assume all inductors are ideal and possess no or negligible amounts of internal resistance. Express all your final answers using proper engineering format and use polar complex numbers with a magnitude and direction. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. For our first example problem, we're given a series relationship of a 180 ohm resistor and a 24 microfarad capacitor at a frequency of 50 hertz. The resistor has a complex impedance of 180 ohms at an angle of zero. And the capacitor has a complex impedance of 132.6 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Summating these values, we arrive at a total series complex impedance of 223.6 ohms at an angle of negative 36.4 degrees. For the second example problem, we're given a series relationship of a 300 ohm resistor and a 430 millihenry inductor at a frequency of 80 hertz. The resistor represents a complex impedance of 300 ohms at an angle of zero, and the inductor represents a complex impedance of 216.1 ohms at an angle of positive 90 degrees. Summating these values, we arrive at a total complex impedance of 369.8 ohms at an angle of positive 35.8 degrees. For the third example problem, we're given a series relationship of a 470 ohm resistor, a 67 millihenry inductor, and a 0.12 microfarad capacitor at an excitation frequency of 1.5 kilohertz. The resistor represents a complex impedance of 470 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees. The inductor represents a complex impedance of 631.5 ohms at an angle of positive 90 degrees. And the capacitor represents a complex impedance of 884.2 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Summating these values, we arrive at a total complex impedance of 533.6 ohms at an angle of negative 28.3 degrees. For our fourth example problem, we're given a series relationship of a 220 ohm resistor and a non-ideal inductor with a 10 ohm internal resistance and an inductance of 390 millihenries at an excitation frequency of 60 hertz. The resistor represents a complex impedance of 220 ohms at an angle of zero degrees, and the non-ideal inductor represents a complex impedance of 147.4 ohms at an angle of 86.1 degrees. Summating these values, we arrive at a total complex impedance of 273.0 ohms at an angle of 32.6 degrees. Finally, for example problem 5, we're given a series relationship of a 750 ohm resistor, a 3.9 microfarad capacitor, a 180 millihenry inductor, and a 4.3 microfarad capacitor at an excitation frequency of 200 hertz. The resistor represents a complex impedance of 750 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees. The first capacitor represents a capacitive impedance of 204.0 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. The inductor represents a complex impedance of 226.2 ohms at an angle of positive 90 degrees. And finally, the second capacitor represents a capacitive complex impedance of 185.1 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Summating these values, we arrive at a total complex series impedance of 767.5 ohms at an angle of negative 12.3 degrees. All right, hopefully you did well on that example set. By all means, pause the lecture and check these answers out and correct any mistakes you may have made. Let's close out this lecture with a quick discussion of shorts and opens inside series AC circuits. Recall from our earlier discussion on shorts and opens inside series DC circuits that shorts and opens can dramatically alter the total resistance of that series relationship. Series AC circuits behave no differently, only the terminology is subtly altered. Basically take resistance and swap it out for the term impedance and you get the picture. A short is a path with zero impedance through which substantial current will flow. No voltage will be dropped across the short. 
In contrast, an open is a path with infinite impedance through which no current will flow. All voltage will be dropped across the open. Let's examine the influence of shorts first. Consider a series relationship of a 910 ohm resistor, an 800 millihenry inductor, and a 27 microfarad capacitor at a frequency of 60 Hz. Ordinarily, the resistor would represent an impedance of 910 ohms at 0 degrees. The inductor an impedance of roughly 301.6 ohms at positive 90 degrees, and the capacitor an impedance of roughly 98.2 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. When connected in the following fashion, this series relationship would represent a total impedance of roughly 932.4 ohms at an angle of 12.6 degrees. Note the slightly inductive nature of this series relationship of three elements. The negative imaginary capacitive contribution isn't lost, but rather serves to moderate the positive imaginary inductive portion and shift it ever so slightly towards the real axis. If, however, a short in the form of a zero ohm resistive wire was placed across the terminals of the inductor, note the inductor would be effectively removed from consideration given any current entering this node would be routed around the inductor rather than through it. As such, this series relationship is now only comprised of just the remaining resistor and capacitor. When these two remaining elements are combined in series, the total complex impedance value is 915.3 ohms at an angle of negative 6.2 degrees. As can be expected, this modified series circuit seems to flip-flop to the capacitive end of the spectrum. Not only is the nature of the device shifted, it has also changed in magnitude. Opens in series paths necessitate far less computation because the inclusion of an open anywhere in a series path completely cuts that series path and as a result, no current can flow. Consider the same series relationship of a 910 ohm resistor, an 800 millihenry inductor, and a 27 microfarad capacitor at a frequency of 60 Hz. As previously discussed, ordinarily this series relationship will represent a total impedance of roughly 932.4 ohms at an angle of positive 12.6 degrees. However, an open between the inductor and capacitor, or for that matter, anywhere in this single path, is like adding an infinite resistance in series. Infinite impedance effectively renders this path useless as a means of carrying current. Let's put your understanding of series complex impedance calculations including shorts and opens to the test with this example problem. Given the series circuit of a 180 ohm resistor and a 20 microfarad capacitor at 50 Hz, calculate the resultant total complex impedance given ordinary conditions, the inclusion of a short across the 180 ohm resistor, and an open between the resistor and capacitor. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. Express all your final answers using proper engineering format and use polar complex numbers with a magnitude and direction. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. The 180 ohm resistor represents a complex impedance of 180 ohms at an angle of zero, and the capacitor represents a complex impedance of 159.2 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Sum adding these values, we arrive at a total complex impedance of 240.3 ohms at an angle of negative 41.5 degrees. Given ideal conditions, including no shorts or opens, the circuit would ordinarily exhibit a mixture of resistive and capacitive characteristics given its position within the fourth quadrant. If, however, we included a short, the resistor would be removed from consideration, and as such, our modified series relationship will represent a total complex impedance of 159.2 ohms at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Note the nature of the total complex impedance of our modified circuit is entirely capacitive in nature because the resistor has been removed from consideration. As such, one would expect this circuit to exhibit entirely capacitive characteristics in contrast to our desired unmodified series circuit including both the resistor and capacitor. Finally, the inclusion of an open effectively ruins this series circuit and the total complex impedance is infinite given no path exists. All right, that's about it for our discussion of series complex impedances. In conclusion, this lecture examines series complex impedances. We learn series or inline complex impedances add up. However, one must account for direction when doing so. Additionally, we examine the effects of shorts and opens in series relationships. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing.
Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your Lazy Lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.